If you follow any Florida blogs, you've likely seen Hood Fishing Entertainment as he recently went viral after catching a whole ass shock and doing the most Florida thing possible, putting a gold chain around its neck. 28-year-old Rasheen Bailey, who goes by the nickname Ra or Ra Ra, quickly amassed a following on both YouTube and Instagram, receiving nationwide support as he caught all types of sea life, won awards, and really won over a whole community in which dreads and gold teeth aren't considered the norm, but he shined anyway. Growing up in Fort Myers, for those not from Florida, this was the city also known as Lil' Pakistan. While Palm Beach, Miami, and Broward County sat on the East Coast, Fort Myers laid on the West Coast of South Florida. The Michigan projects would be home to Florida legend Plies, and Plies would carry the city on his back while putting it on the map. Looking at old footage of Fort Myers, it's not hard to see why Ra chose the name Hood Fishing. At 16 years old, Ra would move from Fort Myers to play football for Cape Coral High with the dreams of pursuing a football career, but the following year, his life almost ended. On July 1st, 2013, Fort Myers police were dispatched to a call for shots fired in the area of Lemon Street and Palm Ave. They drive through multiple streets before being flagged down by a then 17-year-old Ra, who said he'd been shot in the back somewhere by the blue store. Officers attempted to get information from Ra and his mother, who was also on the scene, but both were uncooperative. That's when Ra stated he was outside a house with a friend, and two males that he knows as Jay Riggins and Fat Sam started shooting at them. Ra took his shirt off saying he was shot in the back while running, showing he'd been grazed by a bullet. Ra said his friend was possibly hurt but couldn't provide the address to where the shooting occurred, only saying he was outside of a white and peach colored house a block from the store. EMS arrived on scene to treat Ra's wound as his mother explained she came to pick him up and take him to the hospital when they flagged down the officer. Locating the shooting scene, officers would find nine shell casings from a 45 and a 10 millimeter pistol. Ra would be escorted back to the house, confirming that's where he was shot at. Officers made contact with Jatavis Carey at the home, who said he was outside with Ra when the shooting happened. They observed Jay Riggins and Fat Sam shoot at them, and Carey stated he and Ra ran before making his way back inside the home. Ra requested to make a report and press charges. Ra and his friend later arrived at the Fort Myers Police Department to provide sworn statements where they identified 17-year-old Javarcia Riggins and 16-year-old Jared German out of a photo lineup. Both teens would be charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without the intent to kill. Both teens would be taken to a juvenile detention facility where they'd eventually be adjudicated as adults and face upgraded charges of attempted murder. With Ra listed as a witness, it was in January of 2014 when he'd be called in to testify. Now 18 years old, Ra would state he's a junior at Cape Coral High. He'd get into his life story starting football at 5 years old and living inside Campbell Acres from 6 to 17. Campbell Acres is a one way in, one way out neighborhood based around four streets. The hood would be known throughout the city as the chop, and Ra would leave his hood for Cape Coral for better opportunities and to play for a better football team. Throughout his testimony, he'd have to explain how he made it to his friend's house, stating he was driven by his cousin. At first, he refused to give up his cousin's name to the courts, as he didn't want to involve anyone else, but the courts would persist, and Ra eventually gave in. Moving on, Ra would state he was over his friends playing video games, and as it got later, they'd go out to the carport while Ra waited for his mom to pick him up in the rain. As Ra and Tavis shook hands, Ra witnessed the two teens approach saying, what's up Tavis, before opening fire. Ra would clarify for the courts who he saw, but that he never saw an actual gun, just the fire coming from the barrel. When asked about Fat Sam, Ra would say he grew up with him, and at one point played flag football with him. He'd tell the courts he doesn't know much about him, but say his Facebook name was Bucktown German. Bucktown was another Fort Myers hood. Ra would describe a team party he was warned not to go to where he saw Fat Sam. No words were exchanged, 
only looks. And Ra would describe them in court as I'm gonna kill you when I see you, I'm gonna beat you up looks. Ra would explain he's from the chop, while Fat Sam and Jay Riggins were from Bucktown, a rival hood. Ra would say he didn't have problems with anyone, but people he knew had problems with them and vice versa, so he was caught in the mix. Come to find out Ra actually grew up with Jay Riggins and would go over his house a lot, which is how he came to know Fat Sam, but eventually they'd make other friends, and those friends would become enemies with others. Ra told the courts before this incident his house was shot up, and Jay Riggins told his mom he had nothing to do with it, but he showed the boys where he lived, and they shot it up. Ra's mom would confront Jay and Fat Sam saying she wouldn't put the police on them, but what was the problem? And Fat Sam would say it was over a girl. Fast forward to the night Ra was shot, he just so happened to be texting a girl related to Fat Sam when Fat Sam and Jay showed up. Ra would say he really grew up in Michigan, where kids fought instead of shot, and they just moved on. The courts would ask if the shooting had affected him, and Ra said he's cool with it. When asked if he's afraid, he'd say no, and that he actually ran into Jay and Fat Sam while they were out on bond at a movie theater, and nothing happened. When asked if he's had a nightmare, he'd say no, he's never feared for his life, and if anything, he felt like it was a push to get out of Fort Myers. He'd tell the courts he'd rather have them see him on TV, wishing they could be him, but they chose the wrong thing. Little did Ra know, that's exactly what would happen. Jay Riggins would eventually plead guilty to two counts of attempted murder and receive a youth offender prison sentence of four years, followed by two years of probation. Jay would enter Florida State Prison in January of 2016 and be released in March of 2018 as he also received credit for his time in jail. His probation would be terminated only seven months later, but not for good behavior. This evening at approximately 9.30 p.m., the Lee County Sheriff's Office responded to shots fired in the Bell Tower shops. Upon arrival, our deputies observed two individuals that succumbed to their injuries and two other individuals were transported to a local area hospital their injuries are unknown at this time, and they're being treated. It appears to not be a random act of violence. I can tell you the Lee County Sheriff's Office Major Crime Unit is working very, very hard. All our resources are here. So please respect that scene and give us time to get all the details together. It's very open, very active. As we get details, I will get them to you as soon as possible. But again, we're gonna be working through the night Please give us that time, and again, it does not appear to be a random act of violence. On October 9th, 2018, Jay Riggins was eating at a TGI Friday's celebrating his mom's birthday. Jay, his mom, and his dad walked outside for a cigarette when gunfire erupted. As the smoke cleared, 22-year-old Jay and his 56-year-old father lay dead. Another woman was found shot and another suffered injuries from glass shattering, but both would survive. Fat Sam would make a mistake many young men do as they enter the system. He'd take his case to trial and be found guilty on both counts of attempted murder, leaving him with a 20-year prison sentence. An appeal would be filed stating it was a dark rainy night on the night of the shooting. No physical evidence or forensic evidence could identify the shooters. No other witnesses were ever found in the case, and the only evidence admitted at trial was the testimony of Rasheen Bailey, aka Ra. During Fat Sam's third year in prison, Ra would attempt to retract his trial testimony, but what was done was already done, and the appeal would be denied. Hood Fishing Entertainment would start in 2020, and Ra would share his adventures to social media as over the next four years his brand grew, but with success comes jealousy and envy. I would receive DMs months ago asking for me to expose Ra as a snitch, but in my mind, it was pointless. He wasn't a rapper portraying a gangster. He was just a man fishing, finding his own lane. So what changed between then and now? 
Rasheen Bailey is known by many as hood fishing on Instagram and TikTok. He's recovering after being shot multiple times in Fort Myers. Tonight, Bailey's comment section is flooded with support and people questioning why someone would shoot him. One person even wrote, why would bro even have enemies? On May 2nd, 2024, around 4 p.m., shots rang out on MLK Boulevard in Michigan Ave. Rob was driving his car when another vehicle opened fire, shooting him multiple times. The shots caused Rod to veer off the road, cross the median, and crash into a truck. Rod would get out of the car running to a bystander, asking her to call 911. Rod would then flag down officers who applied a tourniquet before he was rushed to a hospital. An official statement would be posted to Rod's YouTube channel stating he was shot four times and is expected to make a full recovery. But why was he shot? Was this a random act of road rage? Or was the past coming back to haunt him? See, Ra spoke his future into existence. Jay Riggins was killed before Ra ever became successful, and Fat Sam is sitting inside of a Florida prison while Ra is blowing up on social media. But there's also an entire hood called Bucktown that's watched two of their guys go down because of Ra. Now did Ra snitch? At this point, that question doesn't even need an answer. But what many will say is, why does it matter? It matters because no matter how much you change your life for the better, whether you put the guns down to pick up a fishing rod, or you put the drugs down to pick up a football, the people in life that don't see the greater things in life will always be looking for someone else to blame. They will envy your success and because of their inability to achieve more, they will do what they can do to drag you back down. I'm not stamping Ra a rat because his lifestyle doesn't abide by a code. He said it back then in the courtroom he doesn't fear for his life and he'd rather kill him with success. I will say this though, naming his brand Hood Fishing is walking a line where people can criticize him for still attaching Hood to his name when he broke a code 90% of people pretend to follow. Ra himself has a criminal history, but the majority is all petty. The most serious case Ra had was for almost upping a gun on someone and chasing them down in a car. And come to find out, it was an undercover cop sitting outside his family's home. Ra could also be seen in a 2017 music video of 5150 Committee, a murderous rap group out of Fort Myers. Ra wouldn't rap, but can be seen holding an AIP in the background of the video. Two of the rappers were killed, one is in prison for murder, and the other is now unheard of. With Ra expected to make a full recovery, the only thing he needs to do is get far away from Fort Myers. He's found his own lane, and I guarantee it will be unaffected by his past since he really didn't change his life around. He never lived that life to begin with, and always had a dream to make it out the hood.